Here's an idea. D&D shows us why platonic realism is wrong. Dungeons and Dragons is a tabletop role-playing game created in 1974 by Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. In the game, you create your own character and lead it on a journey through a fantastical world. And this character can be anybody. A gnome who gave up pro wrestling to become a bard. A paladin who enjoys classical music. A dwarf who cooks some cool ball stew. You make your character as similar to or different from yourself as you like. You pick everything about your character from their weapons to their hobbies to their moral alignment. There are two axes to D&D's moral alignment system. Lawful versus chaotic and good versus evil. Lawful does not necessarily mean you will abide by the laws of the land they are currently in. An evil overlord trying to take over a kingdom may be lawful evil, even though invading and murdering people is most definitely against some laws. Instead, the lawful chaotic axis is more about a general orderliness, adhering to a personal code, sticking to your promises, consistency and predictability, which is why its opposite is chaotic, not criminal. This gives you the flexibility to choose a morality, so you can choose to be a bad person and get rewarded for it. You had an innocent bystander? Well, that's just how it is with the evil KI character. Good and evil and D&D are actually very interesting because they have changed with the times. In 3rd edition, characters can change their alignment, but certain classes such as clerics and paladins can lose their powers if they do so. And assassins, keeping with 1st edition, are necessarily evil alignment, even though fighters are not. So it's not a principle stance against taking out life so much as a problem the dishonorable way in which assassins behave. Dishonorable by what standards? The quorum of goods standard, apparently. Another interesting feature of the alignment system is that popular ideas of good and evil don't always line up with the manuals of for D&D. If your character is lawful good, they must be lawful good as defined within the world of the game. What literature nerds call the diagesis, or interdiagetically. Intradiagetically, it may be good to punish evildoers for their crimes. Even if in real life, a socially conscious person may push for rehabilitation and restore justice. While different GMs may have different notions of good and evil, and always have the authority to overrule the rule book if, so, if they so desire, D&D manuals have a set out notions of what good and evil entail for years, each time establishing that there are real intragenetic forces that can be channeled and empirically measured. In the first edition of D&D, paladins had to be lawful good and could not join a party with evil party members. Detect Alignment is a spell that will tell you how good or evil someone is more accurately than anything that they say or do. Why? Well, is how good or evil someone is in this world is a function of their alignment, not necessarily of their actions. So, what kind of morality is this? When you spend a prolonged period of time playing D&D, you will notice that firstly, what is good and what is evil is very often contingent on what the GM thinks. And secondarily, it being objective fact, intradiagetically, allows for a whole lot of crazy stuff to happen. The structure of the world justifies committing genocide against evil creatures as just morally good. You can kill evil beings without having to feel remorse or empathy for their plight, because they are objectively, just testifiably evil, and removing any evil from the world is good by definition. The 5th edition says, Alignment is the essential part of celestials and fiends. A devil does not choose to be a lawful evil, and it doesn't tend toward lawful evil, but it is lawful evil in its essence. If it somehow ceased to be lawful evil, it would cease to be a devil. All the evil creatures are actually the victims of evil deities who created them without a proper free will, and we still treat their actions as if they're somehow their fault. 3rd edition D&D allows your character to change their alignment based on their actions. Whether that happens is up to the GM. If a player says, my neutral good character becomes chaotic good, the appropriate response from the GM is, prove it. If your choices affect your alignment, but you can't have an alignment before making a choice, 
Then what does that even imply? The reason behind this corporate world building is that D&D's morality is platonic realism. Platonic realism is not accepting that in reality you won't be getting laid too often. Instead, it's a notion of certain ideas being, well, real. More real, perhaps, than you or I. If you're a realist, you believe there is some perfect form of X, and that you can approach or move away from it. X might be chairs or it might be moral fortitude, but the approach is the same. If you're anti-realist, you believe that there are no forms of X. There are just things in the material world. Family resemblance ideas, as Wittgenstein would call them. Relationships that our brains make. Chairs are not one thing, with every physical chair being more or less similar to that thing. Chairs are any object we collectively call chairs. If the forms of good and evil are real, in the same way that your computer is real, that implies a few things. First, that you can get closer to them. You may never reach the form of good or the form of evil unless you become a god or something, but you can get closer or further away from them. You can test things against the forms of good, evil, law, and chaos, and so on. The Detect Alignment spell allows you to do this. From that it follows that there is no room for augmentation about what is good or bad in the world of D&D. Things do not become good or bad over time as society shifts. Things are just good or bad, period. In a morally absolutist framework, and if there is progress, that progress involves a whole of society moving towards the form of good or away from the form of evil. It does not involve good or evil changing over time. If the question of whether or not we should send someone to prison is are they a threat to others around them in society, that question can be answered with detect alignment. This is pretty interesting because the eternal notion of good and law has changed over the lifespan of the game. And the first edition is very different from the fifth edition. But moral understanding changes in our world, not just in the world of D&D. This means that older editions of the game, when they have specifics on what is good and what is evil, tend to feel a little strange to contemporary audiences. Which sounds pretty awesome, because it makes the world much easier to deal with. But the more you think about it, the more unsettling it becomes. Because how do you know if the form of good or evil is the real one? In short diagenic D&D, Britannic realists would think they have second order access to the truth of the universe because they have direct access to the things that are made out of it. But in Trendigenic D&D, anti-realists could reasonably think the realists have second order access to some of the physical stuff they think is the truth about the universe. But really, it's just some psychopath saying genocide is good so long as the souls of the people in question are red instead of blue. You don't actually know, in a way whether the form of good is aligned with everything that is good, or whether the form of good is just a thing calling itself that. Evidence for the latter interpretation just being how cool they are with stuff like genocide creates a weird situation in which you could literally just call good and evil side one and side two, and see that they cluster around things commonly seen as good and evil. But because those clusters change over time from our perception, and the clusters in the D&D world don't, they might as well be random lists of things that happen to align with well with our cluster at one point and may not necessarily at other points. This is ultimately about the failure of instrumental rationality in regards to moral reasoning. Instrumental rationality being the kind of reason where you know what you want, you need to think to figure out how to get it. In contrast to value rationality, which is where you don't know what you want and need to figure out what it is or should be. You know, like most moral reasoning, even in a world where instrumental reasoning could be used to make discoveries about good and evil that objectively exists, we would ultimately have to have some sort of independent criterion for what is good and evil in order to know that the form of good can be trusted. Which means you can't escape value rationality by replacing it with instrumental rationality in a world where good and evil exist outside of people's heads. D&D is, in a way, a very, very complicated thought experiment. And one of its premises is the notion that platonic realism is a 100% verifiable fact in this world. And yet, the evidence does not help solve morality. Because the legitimacy of such a claim still needs to be back to using moral argumentation. And the idea 
that it can be bypassed is naive and likely lead to more problems than it solves. This is probably why in the 5th edition, they basically got rid of Detect Alignment. Instead, now you have Detect Evil and Good, which only really applies to demons and divas and so on. But what do you think? If good and evil were physical things to contest against, would we still need more augmentation? This episode was made by all these chaotic good creatures. Idea Project is an open access community that thinks critically about media. We have a blog, forum, subreddit, twitter, and discord. So if you want to contribute or join in on discussions, you can do so by clicking the links down in the doobly-doo. Don't forget to share with all your friends and subscribe.